Welcome to our Sociedad ceremony today. My name is Lakshmi Andretti, and I'm the Dean of the College of Engineering. Uh, myself and our leadership team at the college level, we uh, look forward to this event uh, every semester uh, to celebrate our students' successes, your successes. So <clears throat> I want to first of all congratulate you all because you have all made it. And um, uh, you, this is an important milestone uh, for you uh, in your lives. Uh, you have completed uh, a degree here. So uh, second, I want to thank you also for uh, putting up with us uh, during a very unprecedented time when we really need to do so many things unexpectedly, uh, change the course delivery modes um, without much, much notice. So you have put up with it all and um, our faculty uh, uh, also ought to be thanked because they have uh, done an amazing job of uh, adapting uh, to the times that uh, we are, we're living in. Uh, and uh, fortunately, um, it looks like we see the light at the end of the tunnel and, and uh, it looks like it'll be more like a a, a conventional type of uh, um, schooling uh, starting fall semester, we'll see. Uh, and I also want to thank your uh, parents and family uh, because uh, they too uh, have uh, shown tremendous commitment uh, to NMSU and have been very patient with us and they trusted us to educate uh, in engineering here at NMSU. So, uh, I have always felt, as I mentioned several times, uh, that NMSU uh, engineering is truly fortunate to have generations of outstanding first-generation students uh, and their parents, committed parents, uh, every year, year after year. So we are truly blessed to have this extended family with us. Uh, that's how we look at all our constituencies. We are all part of a, a big family. Um, before we go on with our ceremony, which should last about, about an hour, uh, I want to recognize our uh, college leadership uh, team. Um, in no particular order, let me um, recognize the department heads first. Dr. Gabe Garcia, Engineering Technology and Surveying, and Dr. David Rockstra, Chemical and Materials Engineering. After nine years of service as the department head, Dr. Rockstra is retiring, so this is his last ceremony. We wish him well, and we welcome the uh, new leader for the department, Professor Jessica Houston. Dr. Hansuk Song, Industrial Engineering. Dr. David Hardegi, Civil Engineering. Dr. Heinz Nakori, Engineering Physics. Dr. Jay Frankel, Mechanical and Aerospace Engineering. Dr. Steve Stohai, Electrical and Computer Engineering. Dr. Tony Garcia, Associate Dean of Academics, Dr. Gabe Garcia, Associate Dean of Student Success and Experiential Learning, Dr. Han Suks, I'm sorry, Dr. Hang Mei Lu, Associate Dean of Research, and Dr. Patricia Sullivan, Associate Dean of Outreach and Recruitment. I also want to recognize our staff members because without staff help, we will not be able to have such a uh, an enjoyable ceremony today. So let me thank up front uh, our uh, staff members uh, in all order again, Ms. Linda Fescus, Chief of Staff in the College of Engineering, uh, Vladimir Rabina, uh, Chelsea Lester, Shashidar Chantalapati, Samar Khalil, and numerous other staff members at the department level. Um, I, I truly want to thank all of them because these are the people who provide all the work necessary background in order for your graduations to be possible. I also have a special guest with us today uh, that I'm going to introduce at some length later, uh, Mr. Scott McLaughlin. Uh, and I will take the pleasure of introducing him and giving uh, you uh, his short bio. Uh, he was uh, there, just like you, graduating from NMSU not too long ago and um, uh, had a very, very inspiring uh, career path. Um, I want you to hear directly from him. Uh, a little later, perhaps in the middle of the, toward the middle of the program, 
Um, so we would uh, leave that part to that uh, segment of the program and we'll continue. So Dr. Tony Garcia, let the fun begin. Thank you, Dean Reddy. And congratulations, graduates. You've shown resilience and perseverance and hard work has paid off. And what I'll do is first read the history of the Sociedad de Ingenieros. And so if I can start, the, the, the Sociedad de Ingenieros was established on the campus of New Mexico State University on December 12th, 1989 by deans and department heads of the College of Engineering. The society is dedicated to each graduating class of engineers in anticipation of the future contributions they will make to society while practicing their profession. The society is named after the word ingenium, meaning innate or natural capacity and genius in Latin, which is the origin or of Romance languages. In countries where the Romance languages are spoken, the title of engineer bears great honor and engineers are highly respected for the academic rigor required to obtain a degree in engineering and the achievements of engineers that affect the world. At each ceremony, eminente members are inducted into the society. These recipients have distinguished themselves in the field of engineering and serve as role models for new graduates. So next I'll read uh, more about the Order of the Engineer, which is our ceremony today. In 1926, the ritual of the calling of an engineer was initiated in Canada, which includes placing a wrought iron ring on the small finger of the working hand. In the United States, the ceremony is known as the Order of the Engineer. The ceremony presents an opportunity for you to take a pledge and recall that the professional purpose of engineering involves the pursuit of a learned art in the spirit of public service. The obligation of the order of the engineer is the formal statement of the engineer's responsibilities to the public and to the profession while promoting honesty and integrity. Initiates as they voluntarily accept it, pledge to uphold the standards and dignity of the engineering profession and to serve humanity by making the best use of Earth's precious and limited resources. Your membership in the, in the order is symbolized by the acceptance of an obligation and the wearing of the stainless steel ring on the little finger of the working hand. So some of you have picked up your ring already and some of you will get it in the mail very soon. Wear it with pride in and dedication to our profession. So back to you, Dean Reddy. Well, thank you, Dr. Garcia, thank you. Uh, the next segment of the program we will recognize the uh, outstanding uh, graduate from each department. Uh, but first, let me take uh, uh, pride in announcing and recognizing the College of Engineering highest honors graduate, uh, Mr. Matthew Colquitt. Um, he had a GPA of 4.0, a Crimson Scholar, and uh, made it to the Dean's List all four years. BS in Mechanical Engineering with a minor in Spanish. Crew manager, uh, Zambezi Delta Safaris, Mozambique, summer 2019, recording and cataloging movement patterns and identifying features of game species. Must be a very fun job. Intern during summer 2020 at Army Research Laboratory, uh, where he analyzed microscale weather data and implemented fluid dynamics to help explain observed phenomena. Is a Lambda Chi Alpha fraternity member, fall 2017 to present. We're very proud of you, Matthew. Congratulations to you. Next, we will go ahead and recognize the outstanding graduates from each of the departments. Uh, first, uh, Department of Chemical and Materials Engineering and Professor Katie Brewer will represent that department. Katie. Thank you, Dean Reddy. I have the distinct pleasure of introducing our College of Engineering and our Department of Chemical and Materials Engineering outstanding graduate, Jessie Linder. So Jessie will be receiving her Bachelor's of Science in Chemical Engineering with a minor in Chemistry. And in spite of my best attempts in my heat and mass transfer class, she's gonna be graduating with 4.0 GPA. As a student, she completed three summer internships, two as a process engineer for Chevron Phillips in Texas, 
and one as a panel engineer for Sol Aero Technologies in Albuquerque. Jesse served as the president for Omega Chi Epsilon, the Chemi Honor Society this last school year, and has been a regular contributor to the student chapter of the American Institute of Chemical Engineers. Among her scholarships and awards, Jesse was one of 15 students to be an NMSU President's Associate Scholar. She also received an NMSU Pioneer Leadership Award, took fifth in the World of International Public Policy Forum in 2015, and was second in the 2016 USA Cycling Enduro National Championship. Congratulations, Jesse. Now to introduce for chemical engineering, I um, welcome Dr. Lambus Papelis. Dr. Lambus Papelis is actually from civil engineering. Lambus, uh, go ahead. Sorry for the, uh, the, uh, the, the technical difficulties. Um, so representing the uh, Department of Civil Engineering, the outstanding graduate is Nicholas Ross Luhan. Where do I start with uh, Ross Luhan? Nick is getting a bachelor's degree in civil engineering with concentration of structure engineering and with a math minor. Now his GPA is not a four, it's a 4.000. And the only reason it's a 4.000 is because A pluses still counts as fours. Otherwise, I'm guessing his GPA would have been somewhere in the order of you know, 4.1 or 4.2. Uh, he's been a Ron Seidel Engineering Leadership Institute Fellow from the uh, fall of 2019 until now. Uh, he's been a College of Engineering Peer Learning Facilitator. Uh, he's been involved with the uh, Daniel B. Jett Student Chapter of the American Society of Civil Engineers from 2019 until present. Uh, this is our society. And not only that, but he's been the, uh, the, he was the vice president in the spring of 2020 and the president in the fall of 2020. For his contributions to the society, uh, he received from the New Mexico section of AC, he received the, uh, the Dr. Harrington scholarship in the fall of 2019, and then the outstanding senior award in spring of 2021. Now, um, he will go to Albuquerque, and nobody's perfect, uh, to work for uh, AECOM uh, as a, a structure engineer, where he actually completed an internship in the uh, fall of uh, 2019. And later on, he hopes to move to Phoenix or Austin to continue working for, uh, for AECOM. Uh, he also says that he plans to save money to build a diversified portfolio of investments. And I couldn't agree more, um, Nick, uh, should and everybody else should take advantage of the power of compounding as you probably learned in his engineering economy uh, classes. And by the way, if you were to be invested today would have been an excellent day to be invested because the stock market did uh, fine. Uh, congratulations, uh, Nick, not just for being an outstanding student, but all for your contributions to, um, to the American Society of Civil Engineers. The, um, the next Outstanding graduate uh, seniors from the Department of, of Electrical and Computer Engineering, and Dr. Stohai will uh, present the outstanding graduate. Thank you, Lambus. It's my pleasure to introduce Leonardo Escamilla III as the outstanding graduate from the Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering. So Leo's unique because he was a double major in EE and ME and still managed a GPA of 3.97. He uh, has participated in several research programs related to drones and has two AIAA pu publications on the development of albatross inspired wings for drones. This summer, Leo will intern at Sandia National Laboratories and then return to NMSU in the fall as a PhD student in electrical and uh, computer engineering. Uh, so this is really interesting to have both ME and EE degrees and come back for a PhD in EE. Now I'd like to introduce Heinz Nakode from uh, Engineering Physics to tell us about another outstanding graduate who will continue uh, in, as a graduate student in electrical engineering. Okay, uh, uh, yeah, my name is Heinz Nakode. I'm the chair of the Engineering Physics Program Committee. And uh, Steve is absolutely right. Our outstanding graduating senior will uh, continue also with a graduate degree in electrical engineering. Our senior is Sean Smith. Uh, he 
uh, is an engineering physics student with the electrical concentration. Uh, he has a near perfect uh, GPA uh, of 3.97. Uh, he graduated in less than four years, uh, earning A plus grades in more of one third of uh, his core courses along the way. Um, our 2021 graduating class is exceptionally strong and several of our graduates would have uh, been outstanding graduating senior in previous years. But uh, what sets uh, Sean apart from the others are uh, his commitment to service, particularly military service. Uh, he had earned a bachelor's of arts degree in anthropology and then joined uh, the Ordnance Officer Certificate at the Army Logistic uh, University, and he finished in the top 10% there. He is now serving as a captain uh, of the US Army Reserves, the second in command uh, of uh, the uh, logistics se section and overseeing about 60 soldiers. He also had a deployment in the Middle East, and so we all should thank him for his service to the nation. Now, uh, as if military service and a uh, uh, strenuous EP program isn't enough, uh, Sean still found the time to help uh, the department uh, with service and outreach activities. He also volunteered as an instruction assistant in a, lo a local scuba diving school. I'm not sure where you do scuba diving in, in the desert. And uh, he also participated in undergraduate research with the state climatologist Dave Dubois, uh, who is a New Mexico State's uh, 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 climate, main climatologist. And uh, he worked there on uh, dust detection. Sean uh, started working as a physicist, student trainee with the Center of Countermeasures at Watson's Missile Range in June of 2020. And he will join them full force uh, afterward and at the same time pursue a graduate degree in electrical engineering and also a graduate minor in physics. So he will come back to both departments as well. Okay, uh, congratulations, Sean. And uh, the next outstanding graduating senior is from engineering technology and surveying engineering. And Dr. Gabe Garcia will introduce uh, their uh, senior. Yes, welcome everyone. Um, I have the pleasure of introducing Celine Rodriguez, the outstanding graduate in the engineering technology and survey engineering department. Celine is a 3.8 GPA student in the department. She has been in the Crimson Scholar Program and the Dean's Honor List for the last uh, four years. Um, Celine received the uh, Hadley Honors Scholarship. Uh, she won the Fallen Colors Foundation Grant for Women in Technology uh, essay contest. She has been a student aide uh, in the Engineering Technology and Survey Engineering Department and uh, student aid in the Branson Library, um, where she did various uh, activities. Um, in terms of volunteering work, um, she has been part of the Chi Alpha Missionary, where she volunteered with the summer sports program in Los Alamos. Um, she's been involved with volunteer activities with the Soup Kitchen, Roadrunner Food Bank, and Habitat for Humanity. Uh, Celine will be working for Los Alamos uh, Labs. Congratulations, Celine. Um, she is currently waiting for her security clearance to go through, but hopefully that won't take too long. Um, congratulations, C Celine. Um, next, I'd like to introduce uh, Dr. Hansuk Sun. He is the department head for the Industrial Engineering Department. Thank you, Dr. Garcia. Hello, everyone. Um, it's my great, great pleasure to announce our departmental outstanding senior, the outstanding graduating senior for industrial engineering is Alfonso Pesqueira. Alfonso is a very, very involved student from multiple perspectives, 
while pursuing his undergraduate degree, he is actively involved in a research project funded by U.S. Department of Agriculture. He received a travel award to ERN conference and presented research progress on metal filaments with 3D printers and their mechanical properties. He volunteered to serve uh, as a student mentor uh, in the Doniana Community College hands-on manufacturing processes activities. And he's been also serving as a student mentor in our manufacturing processes class. He was a president for the Institute of Industrial and Systems Engineers student chapter, and also one of our College of Engineering student ambassador. After graduation, Alfonso will attend our Industrial Engineering master's program. I feel very confident that he has a great academic, uh, academic career ahead. So thank you, Alfonso for your hard work and also great service to our department in the college. Once again, congratulations. The next, um, Dr. J. Franco will introduce um, the outstanding senior from mechanical and aerospace engineering. Now you, I turn President. it over to Dr. Franco. Thank you, Dr. Sung. Uh, it's my great pleasure to, to announce the mechanical and aerospace engineering outstanding graduate his name is Joshua Wade Dyer. Uh, he will work at Los Alamos National Laboratory this summer to simulate highly dynamic physics simulations. Uh, he plans to pursue his master's in mechanical engineering and focus in manufacturing and design. His GPA is 3.992. Uh, he's a Crimson Scholar and Dean's Honor List for the College of Engineering throughout his undergraduate studies. He's an active member of Tau Beta Pi, which is a uh, fraternity for the engineers. Uh, it's the Otis Engineering National Honor Society. Uh, he's the VP or Vice President of the uh, New Mexico State University Society of Automobile Engineers, Mini Baja team, uh, 2019 to 2020. Uh, he served as the lead engineer for the capstone design team uh, responsible for determining and assigning tasks and verifying that designs are correct. I would like to say congratulations to Joshua uh, for receiving the Outstanding Graduate Award. Um, I also have the great pleasure of a second award, uh, the Mechanical and Engineering Graduating Ambassador, Adam Flores. Uh, he has a double major in Mechanical and Aerospace Engineering, which is very popular at this university. I uh, will intern this summer at uh, Virgin Galactic as a structural design engineer for Spaceship Two and Spaceship Three vehicles, uh, which is very exciting. Uh, hopes to obtain a full-time position either at uh, Virgin Galactic or SpaceX. Um, he's been involved with student manufacturing um, and it's, well, he's a student manufacturing engineer quality assessment co-op, uh, 2019 to present uh, at the Physical uh, Science Laboratory which is on campus, the PSL. Uh, he's, he's developed, the, he's involved in the development and manufacturing missile components for military, uh, and there's a security clearance uh, acquired and gets obtained. Uh, manu he's been a manufacturing engineering intern the summer of 2019 at Rolls-Royce North America, Indianapolis, Indiana. Uh, he's held uh, leadership positions in the Atomic Aggies rocket team, Spaceport America Cup 2018-2019. Um, he's a College of Engineering Ambassador from 2018 to present. And uh, he's worked in optical alignment satellite systems lead engineer from 2021 January to present. Um, he's also a recipient of the graduate of the Galactic Unit, Unite Scholarship recipient from Virgin Galactic. Uh, with that said, he's done a lot in mechanical and aerospace engineering, very broad education. I will now return the uh, forum to uh, Dr. Reddy R.D. All right, thank you, Professor Frankel. Uh, every semester when we do this, we look forward to uh, hearing from one of uh, eminent engineers um, uh, in the region and in the nation uh, to speak to us uh, who might uh, uh, give us some inspiring accounts of the career path they took 
So uh, I'm very proud to uh, announce that this uh, year's uh, Eminente Ingeniero uh, is Scott McLaughlin, Executive Director at Spaceport America. Um, now, he has a very lengthy bio, um, but I, I feel at the risk of uh, consuming a couple of extra minutes, I would like to read uh, and I would like to give a complete account to all of you because this is truly inspiring to introduce him to you all. Uh, Scott McLaughlin is a highly experienced engineer and he's an executive with a diverse background in both design and business. He has worked in both the private and government sectors and has traveled around the world installing, maintaining, and marketing specialized wind radar systems. His innovative designs support space launch, test ranges, aviation operations, weather service networks, atmospheric research, pollution studies, and shipboard based wind measurements. Users include research and defense agencies such as NASA. Uh, Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, DOE, U.S. Army, U.S. Navy, U.S. Air Force, universities, as well as customers in Spain, Taiwan, India, United Arab Emirates, Thailand, Kuwait, Mexico, Samoa, and Colombia. Having worked on both sides of the negotiating table, Mr. McLaughlin understands the difficulties and advantages present in both private business and government operations. As a technical innovator, a founder, and an executive of a new business unit, he also appreciates the trials and tribulations of entrepreneurial companies looking for funding while working to cross the chasm and to make their mark in the world. In working with and for the federal government at White Sand Missile Range in Southern New Mexico, NASA at Johnson Space Center, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration Border, Colorado, and now the state of New Mexico, Mr. McLaughlin also embraces the challenge of how best to honor taxpayer funded activities. And I'm sure all of you appreciate that part of it. Mr. McLaughlin was born and raised in New Mexico. After graduating from New Mexico State University with a BS in electrical engineering, he moved to Texas, then to Colorado, where he established a radar design and manufacturing business. After being acquired by a similar small company and a 25 year absence from New Mexico, he returned home to the land of enchantment to work and play in the vast and beautiful Chihuahuan desert and mountains of the Southwest. With the lifelong love of space and aviation, Scott found a dream job as director of business development at Spaceport America. In March of 2021, he was selected as the new Executive Director of Spaceport America. We are truly blessed to have him take some time off and uh, spend time with us uh, to give us all a few words of wisdom. So without any further delay, thank you, Scott, and welcome. Uh, you, you're muted, Scott. Of course I'm muted. That's the phrase of the, <laughs> the last year, right? Um, but uh, let me get my, uh, so, uh, thank you for that uh, reading. Uh, if I'd known it, uh, you can read all that. I would have cut my speech from uh, 30 minutes to 10 minutes. Uh, no, no, I mean, uh, I'll go ahead and keep it at 10 minutes. Just kidding. So, hey, I'm very happy to be here. Um, I was very excited when I graduated in uh, May of 1989, 32 years ago. And uh, it was just before uh, you started the Sociedad. So I, I feel like I, uh, I need a ring. Can I, can I get a ring perhaps? So, um, and uh, it's very exciting that you have this uh, have this now. So I'm very excited to be here. Thank you, uh, Dean Reddy, for inviting me. I'm very honored to be able to do this, especially having returned back to New Mexico. This is uh, very exciting and very fun to be here. Um, so uh, you heard a little bit about my past. Uh, let me let me tell you just a bit about uh, my time at New Mexico State. Um, I I was uh, came here, uh, lived in the dorms, got away from my three brothers, and. Uh, I don't even know why I decided to be an engineer, but I found myself an engineer and uh, uh, in school and uh, things were going great. I did a lot, of, had a lot of fun. And eventually though, I, I found that I had a, um, a wife and a daughter while I was in school. So that kind of slowed me down a little bit. Uh, my wife also was in the pride band as I was, and we got married and 34 years later, we're still married and 
I still play trombone and she still plays flute. And uh, since moving back, we, we have fun in the bands around town. But uh, that extra time in school kind of affected some of my career moves. And uh, so rather than leaving town right away, which was my big plan, and I know that's the plans for a lot of, uh, of our graduates in New Mexico, which is too bad. And that's part of what I'm trying to change at the spaceport. But I, I stayed at White Sands for a while. And then I went to Texas as, as, uh, and worked at NASA for a while. I really wanted to do design. And that's what got me back in the, in the private companies where I started to work. Um, and so in the end, I did get this nice balance of working in federal government and understanding government and then being a bit of an entrepreneur and understanding private industry. Uh, but the merger gone bad is kind of what, what got me uh, thinking about coming back into New Mexico. And, and as you all in, enter into business and do things, you'll, you'll, you'll hear more about merger gone bad in your career too. So good luck with that. Um, but that's kind of how things go sometimes. Um, so I wanted to try and think about some observations, not really advice that I could give you. Uh, some things I've learned kind of the hard way. I think we all wind up learning things the hard way. Um, so, but you're, uh, you're unique like everybody else. So uh, your mileage will vary and I'm sure you'll have your own observations in a, in a few decades. So um, one, of the, one of the things I, I hope you all have learned in the last four years or more, however long you've been in there is just how ignorant you are. And, uh, you know, that's the funny thing about going to college is if I think if you're paying attention, you begin to realize just how much knowledge is out there and you get to see how little we actually know. And oddly, you know, the more time you spend specializing, the less you know about everything else, right? That's kind of simple math. If you're spending time on being an expert at something, you can't be an expert on everything. And that's a really, really important thing for everybody to learn because you need to be humble in your job. And I'm sure some of you have already heard it and I can't tell you how many times I've heard it, but when I go to a party or go somewhere and someone will say, oh, look, that guy's an engineer. He must be smart. Um, how many of you have already heard that? You'll hear it a lot. It's a funny thing about engineering because people do know how hard the math is and they know how hard it is to get to your engineering school. So congratulations for making it. But one of the most important things I hope you learned was how to have a curious mind, how to solve problems and really how to learn. And as you move into your career, even though people may say, hey, he's an engineer, she's an engineer, he's really smart, you know, don't be a smarty pants. Stay humble and keep learning for the rest of your life. That's probably the most important thing you can pick up in college because as you go forward, you'll find that your, the knowledge that you gained and the skills you gained are not so important uh, 10 years ago because you've got new knowledge and new skills you need to learn. So learn how to learn and that's what you've done, I think. So um, when it comes to opportunities, um, when I graduated, it was kind of the end of that time period where people tended to be at a company for you know, decades. And part of the reason they were there is because they had good pensions, for example. Well, all of that's kind of gone away. And, and I remember when I graduated, people even talked about how you didn't want to move around too much and you probably needed to stay at a company for eight or 10 years. Otherwise, if you change jobs, people would think you're flighty. Um, now the conversation is almost exactly opposite. If you stay at a company too long, people will think you don't have ambition. Um, and so there is no right answer though. Um, the best thing for you is to be in a place where you're not stagnant, uh, where you, you don't become complacent, where you don't allow your com yourself to become complacent. The best thing for you is going to be to make sure you're in an environment where you're encouraged to grow um, and, and where you can strike out and learn and you can stay sharp your entire career. There's no reason why you can't be top notch your entire career. So um, and opportunity wise, I guess I could talk a little bit about, uh, you know, your career choices. What I, what I found um, probably the most agonizing uh, things that, that came along with my career were having to make decisions about when it was time to leave and where to go and what to do and what, what the little career choices I could make in terms of uh, staying in a company or going to another town. Those were the hardest decisions uh, I ever made. And they're still the hardest decisions I've made. Even coming back to New Mexico, leaving the company I helped found, those were all huge, hard decisions. And I found that those are the hardest decisions um, that, you, that, that I had to make in my career. And, um, there is no good answer. And I think one of the things that I wasn't prepared for is just the fact that those decisions brought a lot of anguish and especially 
as I was married, it was even more so. And, and when you have families, you know what to do. And all I can tell you about those decisions is to learn early how to accept risk in those decisions and learn early that they're a hard decision to make and that you just need to make it. I've seen plenty of people who probably needed to move on in their career, but got stuck with that, with that fear of moving on and they couldn't make a decision. So they stayed where they were. And I'm not sure that was always the right choice for them. So, um, but that risk is something that you have been studying, I hope in your career, you're understanding what, um, as, you, as you work on uh, uh, design and you work in engineering, that's one of the things we're supposed to be able to handle is risk. But, and, and we're supposed to kind of know how to, how to understand that both in terms of its variability and how we apply it. So if you're designing an airplane to carry people or a high-speed rail system, you design for virtually no risk and high reliability. But we can't do that for everything we do, especially in management. So one of the things we have to do is learn how to vary the amount of risk that we can handle and how we deal with inadequate information and facts. This is a very, very, very difficult thing to do. And um, uh, you're, you're gonna have to get used to that too. Um, so you need to learn to grow comfortable with what amount of facts and risk are available to you. And you have to be able to deal with that in some sort of continuum. And knowing that sometimes you can draw a design on a napkin or you can send a very quick email or other times you have to write a report. and. I've known many engineers, and this was something I had to learn, who got stuck uh, not being able to make decisions and not being able to move on until they had all the risk uh, down to as low as possible and they had all the data they could have. And that's very, very hard. Um, uh, you know, it's a very bad place to be. And those engineers I found often uh, kind of got stuck in their career because they couldn't really move up to management. They really couldn't move up to being more in design of a team because they were at a place where they needed the same amount of information and, and accepted the same amount of risk as they did when they, when they first got that job. And, and usually when you're a graduate, the first job you get, you're gonna, get, you're gonna do the sort of design where you get a lot of data and there's not a lot of risk. And if you get too comfortable with that, it's hard to move up on your career. So let me tell you a, a real quick story. If you've ever heard of Sir Robert Watson Watt, uh, they designed uh, the radar, the chain home radar for the UK Met Office. And um, this turned out to be a radar that could detect airplanes and it was helped, helped win the Battle of Britain. And there's a, a movie about it you might want to read, called, you might want to see called Castles in the Sky and there's some information on it. But he had a very interesting quote that I've tried to live by um, in, in, in what I just talked about. And that was, give them the third best to go on, the second best comes too late and the best never comes. So always think about that in your design and what you're doing. Are, are you designing at the appropriate level, you know, using the resources you have, whether it's money or, or quality or time, are you doing the right thing? So, um, so uh, let's see, at this point, I said I would not give advice, but I'll, I'll talk about one more thing and that's uh, you and the, and the and, and your who you are and the people sitting next to you or the people you see on your screen because what you're going to find is the hardest thing in, in your career besides making those career choices is dealing with you and dealing with people around you and are you insecure or your coworkers insecure or are you a narcissist or do you have a narcissist boss if you don't learn how to crack that nut if you don't learn how to deal with yourself and the people around you uh, your your career really won't be what you want it to be so. I found that one of the best things I ever did was to spend time uh, reading books on psychology, on narcissism, on leadership. And you read a very wide array of those kind of books that maybe you didn't have time to read in engineering school. And that will make a huge difference. It takes time, but it will make a huge difference as you move through your career and learning how to deal with yourself and your insecurities and your dysfunctions and how to learn with everybody else's insecurities and dysfunctions. Um, it's a real important thing to do, and especially as engineers, we need to learn that because um, if you've studied engineering accidents, and I don't know how many of you did something like look at the space shuttle accidents, uh, you probably already know the answer, but how were those truly failures in technology or were they fa failures in human relationships and failures in that kind of uh, management? And really it's the latter. Uh, the space shuttles crashed because 
of kind of a failure in the management of relationships and processes between people. The, the failures of the technology actually were pretty well understood. So take time now that you've graduated to spend time learning about yourself. So, so uh, ending this, I'll say one more thing that, you know, if you can stay humble, if you can stay curious, if you can keep learning, if you can learn to deal with a, a continuum of risk and a continuum of data, then you will have a great career and you will hopefully have many, many opportunities and you will get the many chances that I had and uh, hopefully be happy at the end of your career. So thank you very much. All right, thank you so much. Thank you, Scott. And, and thank you for spending your time with us today. And for those uh, words of wisdom, in fact, uh, I'm so glad you touched upon the virtue of uh, being humble. Uh, that probably deserves repetition and uh, the element of risk involved in all of our professions and staying curious. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm particularly uh, uh, drawn toward uh, the things that we rarely hear these days on, particularly on being humble. So thank you, thank you so thank much. You. Thank you. Uh, and, and now uh, comes the uh, uh, part of induction of the recent 2021 graduates. Uh, so uh, for that, the first uh, aspect uh, to do that is to read the obligation of the engineer um, intentionally. Uh, and, and I hope you will all take this seriously in your profession. So to do that, um, may I ask Professor Lambus Papalis for help? Uh, thank you, um, uh, Dr. Reddy. Obligation of the engineer. I pledge to give the utmost of performance to participate in none but honest enterprise, to live and work according to the laws of man and the highest standards of professional conduct, to place service before profit, the honor and standing of the professional before personal advantage, and the public welfare above all other consideration. In humility and with need for divine guidance, I make this pledge. Super. Well, thank you. Dr. Lambus, um, now comes the uh, uh, recognition um, and induction of graduates. And we will do this uh, by department, uh, starting with uh, chemicals and materials engineering. And Professor Kenny Stevens will introduce the department heads and announce induction of graduates. Kenny. Thank you, Dean Reddy. Let me add my congratulations to all the friends and family and especially to the graduates that are here today for the ceremony it's it's so fantastic that for all you've done congratulations so like dean reddy said we'll we're going to read the names of all the graduates and we'll do it by department and we'll start with chemical and materials engineering and dr katie brewer would like to say a few words before we get started with the names dr brewer thank you um, so for the chemical engineers on the call and those that will watch this later um, I wanted to talk a little bit about perseverance and I'll keep it short. Um, something that all of you have had to go through in the last year and a half is perseverance like you never expected. We expect to need to persevere in engineering, but we expect to be able to do it together. And what's amazed me about your class is that you made those relationships, you made that togetherness happen, even though you had to be far apart. Um, I say to my Kimmy 101s, no one gets through this degree alone. And I think your class is one of the best representations I've seen so far about working together to get past these very unusual circumstances. So thank you very much for your perseverance. Um, it's been a pleasure to teach all of you and I wish you the best for what comes next. Back thanks, to you, Dr. Ken. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Dr. Brew. So now for a reading of the names of the students graduating from the Department of Chemical and Materials Engineering. Leonel Eduardo Alderete, David Arthur Amide, Dante Christian Archibeke, Matthew Glenn Armijo, Kendra Sui Arvisu, Antonio Barreto Cruz Neto, Hillary Donna Berger, Martin Nathan Castellano, Randy Russell De Grote, Malachi Deller Igan, Megan Nicole Donart, Peter Ernest Fowler, Jared T. Geiner, Orlando Gonzalez, 
Sean, Hamlin, Kelsey, Louise, Hayes, Ahmed, Ibrahim, Kailani, and the outstanding graduate from the Department of Chemical and Materials Engineering, as well as the entire College of Engineering for spring 2021, Jesse D. Linder. Ashley Elizabeth Lonergan, Jamie Ann McCuskey, Yifan Mao, Avery Rochelle Neveling, Christopher Salcido, Skyler Edward Scott, Caleb Louise Smith, Devin J. Vasquez. And those are your graduates from Chemical and Materials Engineering. Congratulations. And now we move on to the Department of Civil Engineering. And before we get started reading the names, Dr. Lambus Papelis will say a few words. Thank you, Kenny. Uh, dear recipients of degrees in civil or environmental engineering, congratulations. And you actually deserve congratulations twice. Not only because you work very hard, especially the last year, year and a half, to earn a valuable degree, but also because you earned a degree that is a great value. And a good value is a very important consideration for all of us engineers. I hope you will agree with me. It is a good, it's a great time uh, to earn a degree in either civil or environmental engineering because you might have heard, you're probably aware of the discussion in Washington DC about infrastructure bills to the tunes of you know, trillions of dollars. And that's very timely and for a very good reason. Why? Because according to the infrastructure report card that was recently published by our society, the American Society of Civil Engineers, our national infrastructure grade is a C minus. And I hope you will agree with me again that not very many of us other professors or students would have been very happy with a grade of C minus. As a matter of fact, I don't think any of you is graduating with a grade, with a grade of C minus. So the only silver lining, if you will, the, uh, the, the, the positive spin is that our grade on this report card is slightly better than the previous one, which was a D plus but clearly there is plenty of work that still needs to be done and guess who's gonna be doing that work. So one more time, congratulations again. Now get to work and fix our ailing infrastructure in our environment. Back to you, Kenny. Thank you, Dr. Popelis. And so now for a reading of the graduates from the Department of Civil Engineering as well as Environmental Engineering. Isuru Sashitra Aivisiri Wardana Archichige. Jose Alberto Araiza Castello, Sarah Rebecca Blazer, Edgardo Martin Cáceres, Hiram Corral, Himali Nandushani Canchanamala Delanca Pedige, Sofia T. Fajardo, Mr. Concrete Canoe Rembrandt William Fernandez, Tamara Claire Flynn, Judith Maria Garcia, Gregory Joshua Gonzalez, Rodolfo Alejandro Hernandez, Yelena Karapetrovich, Leslie Ledesma, Cameron D. Lozano, and the outstanding graduate from the Department of Civil Engineering, Nicholas Ross Luhan. Ms. Concrete Canoe, Grace Savannah McMurray, Natalie Sage Michaels, Chantal Consuelo Orozco, Rashidatu Osai, Kim Pham, Emmett Rivera, Jeffrey Adam Shelton, Jasmine Margaret Silva, Carlos Daniel Silva Rojas, Osmar Treviso, Shenju Juan. And those are your graduates from the Department of Civil Engineering. Next, we have electrical and computer engineering. Department head, Dr. Steven Stohai would like to say a few words before we read the names. Thank you, Kenny. Hello, graduate, hello 2021 graduates of the Club School of electrical, uh, of electrical and Computer Engineering and congratulations. 
When you receive your diplomas tomorrow, you will join the ranks of electrical engineering and become members of a professional group whose innovations have driven the economy since the dawn of the light bulb. Over the next decade, we will witness significant advancements in autonomy, machine learning, space systems, healthcare, clean energy, all driven by electrical engineers. As you begin your professional careers, remember to be bold and allow your contributions to shape the future. Now back to you, Kenny. Thank you, Dr. Sohai. So now the graduates from the Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering. Alwalid Khalid M. Al-Jasaidi, Hassan Al-Shamari, Warde Saleh Mohammed Al-Yunis, Yahya Mustafa Arafa, Hekmar Arreola, Malika Bandi Opadye, Hatanu Barai, Jonathan Daniel Billingsley, Alexis Ann Boone, Andres Ezequiel Castillo, Anthony Michael Torochis, Abderrahman Nasser El Kanichi, Ayaterrahman Nasser Abdel Megid Abderrasek Al Said, Arandi Aspara Wijerantna, the outstanding graduate from the Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering, Leonardo Escamilla III, Don Michael Gallegos, Adrian Francisco Codina, Hugo Gutierrez Jr., Rene Nicholas Heredia, Stephen L. Jenkins, Thomas Aaron Martinez, Zachary K. Meyer, Patrick Colin Miller, Jerry S. Moore, George R. Nail, Jonathan Charles Nash, Ibrahim Nyau, Moyosore Rufus Osinowo, Clarence Perry, James Pleasant II, Evan Daniel Robertson, David L. Rodriguez, Abhimanyu Sarin, Joshua Patrick Tejas, Ethan Johansson Wagner, Brittany Ann Wells, Jacob Michael Wilson, Ellery J. West. And those are your graduates from the Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering. Congratulations. And now for the Department of Engineering Physics, Dr. Heinz Nakote would like to say a few words before we read the names of the graduates. Hello, Engineering Physics uh, graduates. Yeah, a few years ago, you took on that um, seemingly insane journey uh, of trying to graduate in engineering physics. Essentially, you uh, subscribe to taking the core curriculum of some engineering discipline together with the core curriculum of a physics major. Uh, so you came out of that with the technical know-how of an engineer and the strong fundamental uh, knowledge of a, a physics major. It is a very, very hard degree, but you uh, got through it. And uh, so uh, congratulations, uh, finishing your degree. Our degree is for different concentrations uh, in engineering, uh, aerospace, uh, electrical, mechanical, and chemical engineering. And our 2021 graduating class has uh, all concentrations represented. So again, congratulations. Our alumni typically end up uh, in very rewarding positions, often in leadership positions in their careers, and you are uh, should be prepared to follow in their footsteps. So stay in touch with us. Uh, I wish that we could have the ceremony in person. I'm a little sad that this is virtual, uh, but uh, it is what it is. So uh, 
come back and so we can uh, talk in person once uh, you started your future career. Back to you, Kenny. Thank you, Dr. Nakoti. So the graduates from engineering physics, Karen Black, Everett Elias Bukowski, Jaime Gomez Jr., Josue Luhan, Alex Sanchez, and the outstanding graduate from engineering physics, Sean Michael Smith. Thank you for your service. And those are your graduates from engineering physics. Congratulations. And now to the Department of Engineering Technology and Surveying Engineering, Department Head Dr. Gabe Garcia would like to say a few words to the graduates before we read the names. Dr. Garcia. Thank you, Kenny. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Um, congratulations to all the ETSE uh, graduates and to your parents and families are, who are celebrating with you today. Um, we're thankful for having you with our department over the last uh, several years. Um, the only thing I'm a little curious about is why everyone is not getting an associate's degree in Zoom, which I think you all, all have learned earned over the last year. <laughs> So great job, everyone, and back to you, Kenny. Thanks, Dr. Garcia. The graduates in engineering technology and surveying engineering, Lawrence A. Alvarez, Michael Isaiah Alviliar, Francisco Arroyo, Mark Anthony Barraza, Daniel Armando Barrio Gonzalez, Paul Cameron Bauer, Kate Bolivar, Larry Darnell Cesar, Carlos Raul Carpio, Donovan Ryan Charlie, Miles Robert Choate, Jonathan Eli Cuevas, Christopher Davila, Abel Garcia, Joshua Geisinger, Jesus Eduardo Guillen, Joseph James Harold. Bradley R. Hewish, John Stephen Juanico, Nathan Scott Letourneau, Melissa Lopez, Kevin Martin Luna, Itzel Marquina, Alex Scott Mon, Colin Ray Mon, Tito Gamaleyel Montelongo, Oscar Allen Olivas, Hannah Crystal Pudrechny, Kevin Matthew Wren, Michael Anthony Rivera Jr. And the outstanding graduate from the Department of Engineering Technology and Surveying Engineering, Selene Rodriguez. Eric Joshua Samaniego, Jaybert, Jacob Albert Sawaya, Dylan Cole Sharp, Ethan Silas Slate, Levi Samuel Smith, Amanda C. Stoyanov, Raymond Oran Seidau, John Paul Ignacio Ulibarri, Daniel Okidi, Luis Valle, Michael Richard Villa, Cody Ryan Bolines, Derek Brian Wagner, Theron Tate Waters, Jacob Bo Wissenant, Thomas Eric White, Jess Garner Williams III. And these are your graduates from the Department of Engineering Technology and Surveying Engineering. Congratulations. And now for the Department of Industrial Engineering, Dr. Hansuk Son, Department Head, would like to give a few remarks before reading the names. Dr. Son. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Kenny. So congratulations to all of our spring 2021 graduates. We are very, very proud of you all for the hard work that you put into achieving these great, great milestones. Of course, under um, even under such very, very difficult and uh, unfamiliar circumstances, because of the COVID-19 pandemic. Great job, everyone. You, you made it, right? 
So now you're moving on to a new and exciting chapter in your life. I wish you all the best for the future that lies ahead. I'd also like to give special thanks to the parents, spouses, children, and friends of our graduates for their patience, understanding, and support during these very, very challenging years. I'd also like to thank our industrial engineering faculty members and staff for their tireless efforts for our student success. Congratulations once again to the graduates. And I wish you all the best for the future that lies ahead. Thank you. Back to you, Professor Kenny. Thank you, Dr. Son. And now the graduates from industrial engineering. Alamin Mohammed Abdul Gaini, Abdulaziz Alanasi, Fahad Al Dafiri, Hamad Mater Al Dafiri, Abdullah Al Dafiri, Mohammed Ali, Saud Naif Al Utaibi, Ayat Said Batayne, Eugenio Campos Leal, Samson Estrada, Gregory Efesinachi Ezeami, Diego Guerrero Cano, Tiffany Alice Hall, Donald Joseph Henderson, Janet Quakie, Ruth Marie Lopez, Ruben Lugo, Jesus D. Marquez, Jose Nicolas Mendez Mendez, Heather Faith Morgan, Nelson Tochuku Naogu, and the outstanding graduate from the Department of Industrial Engineering, Alfonso Pesqueira. Yasmina Rocio Rabi, Emily Michelle Carmela Rasmussen, Yushin Yan. And those are the graduates from the Department of Industrial Engineering. Congratulations, everyone. And now for the Department of Mechanical and Aerospace Engineering, Dr. Jay Frankel, department head, would like to say a few words before we read the names. Dr. Frankel. Thank you, Dr. Stevens. Um, greetings, I'm Dr. Jay Frankel. I'm a relatively new department head here at New Mexico State. Uh, welcome graduating seniors and their families and friends. At this point, at this moment in time, it is about you and your accomplishments and your abilities for completing a rigorous set of tasks in order to stand before us today. Your families and friends share and savor this moment with you. They feel the pride and sweat of your efforts in achieving this milestone, and they acknowledge your hard work in reaching this day. You will remain connected to the Aggie traditions of dedication, hard work, integrity, and the pursuit of discovery and knowledge. Many lifelong friends have been made during your time at the university. This includes fellow students, faculty, and staff. The faculty and staff wish you good health, happiness, and a safe journey to your next stop, whether it be in industry, or national labs or graduate studies or other pursuits. Work hard and enjoy being adventurous. Travel when possible for continuing your life journey. Finally, please remember the Mechanical and Aerospace Engineering Department at New Mexico State University. This department in the College of Engineering will grow and we wish you to remain involved and watchful of our efforts. Stay in contact with us and congratulations. To close, Arthur Green, who was the founding dean of Princeton School of Engineering, said, and I'm paraphrasing, the imagination of the engineer is equal to that of the novelist, artist, poet, et cetera. Go Aggies. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Frankel. And now for the graduates from the Department of Mechanical and Aerospace Engineering. Abdulaziz Saud Al-Karfi, Rakan Al-Sharmari, Saul Armendaris, Carlos Daniel Vicio Guardado, Jairo G. Borrego, Kyle Patrick Brooks, Samuel Levi Brown, Eduardo Carnero Rocio, Carlos Eduardo Carrillo Urias, Jason Andrew Chavez, and the College of Engineering recipient of the highest honors, Matthew Colquitt. Paulette Elisa Curiel, Jason Charles Dana, 
Jocelyn Delgado, Austin G. Dennis, and the outstanding graduate from the Department of Mechanical and Aerospace Engineering, Joshua Wade Dyer. Barry Eichmiller, Leonardo Escamilla III, Carter John Flytech, and College of Engineering Ambassador, Adam Guy Flores. Francisco Javier Franco Vizcarra, Tyler Richard Free, Lenda Galaviz Calderon, Juan Alexander Gastelum Redpenning, Melinda Elaine Gomez, Mohammed Kamrul Hassan, Dominic Andrew Hernandez, Zachary Sean Olguin, Ian Christopher Hawksworth, Troy Jacob Hudson, Jared Taylor Johnson, Talon Shane Kettering, Noah David Kohler, Michael Joseph Leong, Arturo Leos Alonso, Jordan M. Linford, Marcela Isabel Lopez, Matthew James Luz Adams, Abner Luna Garcia, Edgar Iram Marquez Herrera, Keenan Andres Marquez, Anthony J. Martinez, Felipe de Jesus Medina Molina, Lie Mu, Damon Antonio Munoz, Lindsay Ryan Myers, Joshua Brian Nakai Chapman, Sarah Nozaki, Berenice Alejandra Olmos Gutierrez, Zachary Joseph Paisani, Shiloh Justin Payne, Corey Michael Payne, Jacob A. Perea, Sami Bashir Nasir, Daniela Quesada Nevarez, Hunter Nathaniel Reeves, Joshua Robbie Riley, Ian Roacho, Paul Jasper Runyon, Leonardo Sainz, Gilberto Sanchez, Osvaldo Sanchez Cano, Avery McCarthy Sanford, Brian Evan Saunders, Samuel Silva, Sterling Hyde Swift, Adam Riley Takeshita, Luis Angel Tovar, Ryan Holden Trent, Megan Jean Trujillo, Dana L. Turon, Conrad M. Velasquez III, Manuel Velasquez Garcia, Aaron Scott Vineyard. And these are your graduates from the Department of Mechanical and Aerospace Engineering. Congratulations. And this concludes the reading of the names. Congratulations, everyone. Back to you, Dean Reddy. All right, thank you. Thank you, Kenny. Well, class of 2021, Congratulations to you all. Please give yourselves a big round of applause. Congratulations again. Now, in closing, I, I want you uh, all to know, while well, I'm repeating here, what uh, our department heads had already mentioned. Uh, please do keep in touch. And uh, please, uh, if you are ever in the region, come back, visit us. We would like to show off what uh, new developments there are in the college. And perhaps you can come back and uh, just like our uh, guest today, uh, Scott McLaughlin, you could uh, give us uh, a history of uh, how your career path has taken you and uh, perhaps give our uh, your juniors words of wisdom, just as Scott did today. Uh, we love to hear from you anytime. And uh, uh, on a different, slightly different note, there's another advantage for being in touch with the college. And that is you could probably, some of you might want to enroll in a, a professional master's program. I know you're all tired now. I know you don't want to think about getting another degree, uh, 
um, after uh, staying for four years or five years for the bachelor's degree. Uh, but remember, Master of Engineering or Master of uh, Information Technology kind of degrees, professional master's programs, do not take four years. In fact, they're only 38 hours. So some of you might be interested. In fact, even if you're not interested now, you might be interested in the future and perhaps your employers would want you to get one master's degree. So if that's the case, come back to us because we have a really good active dynamic uh, system in place right now for professional master's program. And uh, that does not take four years. Uh, that takes, uh, if you plan it very well, three semesters to four. Okay, so with that, I want to uh, wish you luck in your future endeavors. And uh, please do stay in touch via social media. We are there on Facebook, Twitter, uh, and, and everything you can imagine. So, and occasionally, uh, uh, as and when you have something to tell us, contact Vladimir, uh, who is our social media person, and he could share your good stories with uh, all of us. Of course, we always love to hear um, uh, your good stories. So with that, have a great rest of the commencement week. Uh, and I look forward to seeing uh, uh, hopefully all of you, uh, at least the majority of you at the uh, evening ceremony tomorrow evening at seven o'clock. And those of you graduating with graduate degrees, I will see you in a couple of hours from now. So thank you all. Thank you and take care. Thank you.